In this video, we are going to be talking about quadratic functions. So my learning targets are I will write and graph quadratic functions, and I will interpret key features of quadratic functions. So we have a lot of definitions and reminders. So the first one that we are going to talk about is what a quadratic function is. So a quadratic function is a function whose greatest degree is, at, or is 2. So really fast, because we had a debate of it in class, this guy right here, which you've seen before, my pencil's not working, there we go, ax squared plus bx plus c. This guy is a quadratic function. Notice his exponent is a 2, so he is got a, or he has a greatest degree of 2. If this guy wasn't there, if it just said bx plus c, notice his exponent is a 1. That means that his greatest degree is 1. But a quadratic function says that the greatest degree has to be 2. So this is a quadratic function. All right, the second definition is a parabola. So a parabola is the curved graph of a quadratic. So this is a quadratic function. Its graph, however, looks like, this is a really bad picture, but it looks like this, okay? That is a parabola, is that curve right there. All right, the third definition is called a vertex. So the vertex is the maximum or minimum point. So this guy right here, is a minimum point and he is my vertex. If you wanted to see what a maximum would look like, let's pretend like this is my graph. This guy right here would be the vertex. Okay, so both of those are your vertex. The second one is called solutions, roots, and zeros. Now the reason why there are three names here is because you need to know all three names. They are very important. They are the x-intercepts of your parabola. So here and here are both zeros, roots, solutions. And on this guy here and here are both zeros, roots, and solutions. So please know that those names are what it is called. They are interchangeable. They can happen at any time. So just please be careful that you're paying attention to all three of those names. All right, domain is the third one, or the third important thing that we find on parabolas, and that is r. That r right there means all real numbers. It is everything from negative infinity to positive infinity, and that's because these arrows continue to go up and to the left forever and up and to the right. So it will forever go to the left and forever to the right, making it all real numbers for my domain. Range is the next one, and that is my y values of the graph. We're going to talk more about him in a minute because he is not going to be all real numbers because if you notice, he might go up forever or he could go down forever, but that vertex is a stopping point for both of them, so it's not going to be all real numbers for my range. My axis of symmetry is the line that splits the parabola into two symmetric halves, and it always goes through the vertex. So in this case, my y-axis is actually my vertex, the line, or uh, my axis of symmetry, what's splitting it there. Here, my axis of symmetry is this line right here that kind of cuts through it. So I'm going to try to make that a little obvious to see in my picture right here. But this is my axis of symmetry. I generally abbreviate it and call it an AOS. Okay, so axis of symmetry is the line that cuts it in half. All right, so now that we've talked about all those little key parts, let's talk about one other thing really fast, and that's how to get a, t a table to an equation. We have done this multiple times, but we've done it with all other types of functions. We have not done it with quadratics. So anytime you see a table, we're going to use stat. You've used stat before. It's this button right here, this little guy right here next to alpha and the variable button right under delete. You're going to click stat, and then you're going to click enter, and then you'll put all of your L1 and L2 values, your X values here, your Y values there and then you'll go from there. So the buttons for stat, once you put it into stat, we're now gonna use stat calc five, and then we're going to calculate it. And it's gonna give me an A, a B, and a C value so that we can put it into that AX squared plus BX plus C form. Now, we're gonna talk for just a second about the, whoops, um, about the different kinds of stat. So when we go over to calc, we have used four. Four is for linear equations because it only gives me an A and a B for my slope and my Y intercept. We have used zero, which is my exponential guys right there. And that was when we were given an A and a B for A times B to the X. And now we're talking about quadratic, which is this guy right here. Do you see how he says quad reg? Because so, that's when we're talking about quadratic functions. So just know there are three different ones. In this case, we're using five. All right. 
So let's talk about some examples. So my first example is what are the key features of this following quadratic right here? So I'm not going to show you the graph yet. So this guy right here is x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now, what I recommend doing is graphing him first. Now, whether you graph him on the calculator or whether you graph him on paper, it does not matter. In order to graph him on paper, however, I, had to, I found the points. So this guy right here is my graph. Okay, so I said if you're going to graph it on paper, you're going to have to type this guy into y equals, then click second graph to get a list of points. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, we're going to type in x squared minus 2x minus 3, and then we're going to click second graph, and it's going to give me a list of points. So the point z negative 1, 0 is that guy right there, 0, negative 3, and then 1, negative 4, and then I just... I apparently just, oh, he's right there. I had to white him out on accident because I messed up. I just didn't make him dark again. So then that's the point 2, negative 3, and then, of course, 3, 0 is right up there. So that is how I got those. All right, so I'm going to kind of finagle my paper all funny so that we can see all these. So we're going to talk about the key features. So the first one that pops up that I did not define because I'm hoping that we know it is y-intercepts. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Right here, it is crossing at negative 3. Now, even though it's crossing at negative 3, that is not how we write the y-intercept. We don't just put y-intercept negative 3. We write it as a coordinate point. Please do not forget that the y-intercept is a coordinate point. So your answer should be 0, comma negative 3 as a y-intercept. All right, the next ones are solutions, roots, and zeros. Remember, that's that special thing where it's got multiple names. So right here, my so zeros, roots, solutions, those are where it crosses my x-axis. So it crosses the x-axis here at negative 1 and at 3. Again, just like intercepts or the y-intercept, we are not going to just write negative 1 and 3. We're going to write them as a coordinate point, making it negative 1, 0 and 3, 0. My vertex, so again, looking at my little thing, the vertex is your highest or lowest point. In this case, it's a lowest point, which is this guy right here. The vertex is a coordinate point, so we're going to write him as a coordinate point, and he is 1, negative 4, and so that is my vertex. My axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry is the line that cuts him in half, and he goes through the vertex. So right here is my vertex. The line that cuts him in half, I'm going to use my pencil to show it, is going right here through x equals 1. So that is my axis of symmetry. Notice I write x equals 1, not just 1. 1 would mean that it's just like 1 it's not even a point, it's just a number. We're not doing that. x equals 1 means it's the whole line of values of x equals 1. All right, the next one is domain. I'm just going to show it because we should know it. It is r. If I go all the way to the left, this is an arrow right here. Again, white out is not doing me a lick of good here. But there is some arrows right there. The, this goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So that means that it is going on forever, making it all real numbers. Last but not least is my range. So range is my y values. Now we just talked about what the arrows mean. The arrows means that it goes up forever and ever and ever. But it is not going to go down forever and ever and ever. When we look, it stops going down right here. Not here. This is where it touches the y-axis. We don't care about that. If I said that I stopped right here at the y-axis, then I wouldn't have any more graph underneath it. I still have graph underneath it, which means that we definitely do not stop at right here. We're going to stop all the way down here, and that y value is at negative 4. So the way that we write my range is that negative 4 is the smallest out of everything else. So we write y must be greater than or equal to, because it's touching negative 4, negative 4. So I did want to add this in right here because this is something that is extremely true and really nice to know. It says your AOS, the axis of symmetry, and the y value of the vertex are always the same. So look right here, my vertex is 1, my axis of symmetry is 1, that is always going to be true. If your vertex x value is 1, then your axis of symmetry is 1. Or if your vertex x value is 5, then your axis of symmetry is 5. Whatever this first value is, is your axis of symmetry. The second good thing to note is that the range and the y value of the vertex is always the same. That vertex is super important. So right here, negative 4 and my range, negative 4, are the same number. That's because the lowest point is at negative 4 for my y value. That's why my range and my vertex go together. All right, let's do this one. Given the table, 
what are the key features. So I'm giving you a table. Here he is. I'm going to try not to show too much. So I'm going to give you a table, and we're going to have to find all the key features. So the very first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into stat, because that's what we do when we're given a table. So we go all the way up to the top, clear, down. We're going to type in our x values, so negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. We're going to go over to the other side and type in negative 3, 0, 1, 0, negative 3. Stat over to calc. When we go over to calc, again, we're not going to click 4 because 4 says linear. We don't want linear. We want 5 because it's quadratic. Click enter. Go all the way down to calculate. Click enter again, and it's going to give me my A, my B, and my C. Forget about R squared. I still have stat mode turned on and have never turned it off. So here's A, B, and C. So those three guys right there are my A, B, and C values. So when I write my equation, okay, my equation is going to be negative x squared because my A value is negative 1, so that's negative x squared, minus 4x because the B value is minus 4, negative 4, minus 3 because my C is negative 3. So that gives me my equation. Now I'm going to graph it, go into y equals, I'm going to graph that guy, negative x squared minus 4x minus 3. I did not realize I had all that extra stuff back there. Mm, there we go. All right. We're going to click graph so that we can look at the graph while we are doing all my key features. All right. So that's not a very easy way to see the graph, but there he is. Okay. So the first guy is, of course, my y-intercept. So we're going to look for my y-intercept. So you're going to look over here. It looks like, ooh, try and get it focused. There we go. We're going down one two, three, so it looks like my y-intercept is negative three, and so we're going to write it zero, negative three. Now one thing you could also notice, do we see that the, at the end of the equation we have minus three, and my y-intercept is also minus three? That's something that's always true. The end number of your standard form is also your y-intercept, so there's lots of little helpful tricks here, okay? So my zeros, roots, and solutions, that one we're gonna have to look at. Okay, so we're looking for where it crosses my x-axis, which is here and here. We've got it in negative 1 and negative 3. Again, we can't just write negative 1 and negative 3. We have to write them as coordinate points. So that makes it negative 3 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. Sorry that this is having a hard time focusing. There we go. It does not matter which order you write these in. Some people asked. Um, you could have put negative 1 comma 0 first and then negative 3 comma 0 second. I just wrote them this way. Okay. All right, your vertex. Your vertex is your highest or lowest point, one of the most important pieces of the whole thing. So let's look at him here. Okay, so he is, oops, let it focus. It's having a hard time. There we go. So is this guy right here, this point right here. So he is over at negative 2, and it looks like we go up 1. So negative 2, 1 is my vertex. So that is what he is. Now remember, I'm going to show this guy again up here, your axis of symmetry. And the y value of your vertex are always the same. So my vertex value is negative 2 for my x. So that means that my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. The range and the y value of the vertex are always the same. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's talk about domain first. So domain, we already talked about domain, so I'm going to go back up here. Domain is always all real numbers. That's because a quadratic looks like this. Or in this case, my quadratic is upside down, but that's okay because he's still going to go down forever and ever and ever to the left and down forever and ever to the right. So he is all real numbers for domain. Okay, for range, this is where this comes in handy. The range and the y value of the vertex are the same. So the y value is 1. Okay, so we know that it's going to be 1. Now my question is, I'm trying to show it without showing it. There we go. All right, so my question is, is it going to be greater than or equal to 1, or is it going to be less than or equal to? So let's talk about it up here. So this one we said it was greater, to be greater than because negative 4 was the smallest he can go. So everything was bigger than negative 4, which is why the alligator is eating y and not the negative 4. But this guy is different because this guy, it doesn't have a lowest value. It has a highest value at 1. So does that mean that it is greater than or equal to or less than? Well, since, neg or since 1 is the highest he can go, that makes everything less than or equal to 1. All right, that is all I have on key features. If you have any questions, please feel free to come see me in tutoring.